Do you know how to build a data-driven culture within your organization? In this video, I'm going to cover some tips you can implement into your nonprofit so that you all become more data-driven. My name is Michelle Molina. I'm from Connecting Evidence, and I'm here to help nonprofit leaders and social innovators build their data and evaluation capacity. So make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos. When I'm talking about organizations that are data-driven or have a data-driven culture, I'm referring to organizations that consistently use data to become more effective and efficient. And I know a lot of nonprofits are not doing this because I recently read an article by Kathleen Janis. She's the author of The Social Startup Success. She surveyed nonprofit leaders and found that 75% of them are collecting data and only 6% felt that they were using data effectively. So that goes to show that a lot of you are not collecting data and many of those who are collecting data are not actually using it or at least don't feel like they're using it to the full extent that they might be. So my first tip for you will be to have a little bit of a mindset shift hopefully around data and make sure that you view data as a means to an end. So instead of collecting data because it's cool or we're being pressured to do so, we need, to, we need to be thoughtful about what we're collecting and why. The second tip I'll encourage you all to do is to start small. A lot of times when we realize that there is something we might improve on, we set a really big lofty goal for ourselves and we want to do this enormous overhaul. But what I encourage you to do in this situation is to find potential leverage points or quick wins. You want to start building a buy-in for within your organization to actually use data and incorporate data into your processes. So instead of doing a huge overhaul, identify places where you can start small and get some quick wins. For example, are there data sources that you currently have that are not being used that might be relevant to an upcoming decision or an upcoming conversation? I encourage you to go and pull that data out and take it with you to those meetings or those conversations. Or are there any staff members that are asking you for data? I encourage you to figure out a way to get the data into their hands. Or are there any upcoming meetings or opportunities for you to collect data? I encourage you to go in there and consider how you might collect that data that's relevant to your mission. My next tip is closely tied to what I just shared, but the tip is to use the data you have. So remember at the top, I shared Kathleen's survey results. She shared that around 75% of you or 75% of nonprofit leaders are collecting data. So what I encourage you to do is to actually move forward and use your data. And I can tell you that I personally have run into a number of organizations that keep their data in spreadsheets. That's not the best use for it. So what I encourage you to do is to use the data you have in some way. And there are a number of things you might do to actually move forward with this step. But just very quickly, what I would encourage you to do is to make a list of your data and then right next to it um, what it's being used for. And if you find that your data is not actually being used for anything, you should consider A, can I find a use for it? And if not, then B, can I stop collecting it? Some potential uses is upcoming meetings, like I've already mentioned. Are you going to be discussing a topic that you have data on at, in an upcoming meeting? Or are you going to run into stakeholders that would care about the data you are collecting already? I encourage you to write a quick summary of your data, make a couple of charts so that you can easily share it, share your data during this, these upcoming meetings. Or are you uh, doing newsletters that you send out to stakeholders? You could plop some of your charts or some of your findings into these newsletters. It's an opportunity for you to share your successes or to make the case that there is a need for the work you do. So 
go review your data, identify how it's being used, and if it's not being used, figure out a use for it. Consider A, can I find a use for it? And if not, then B, can I stop collecting it? The next thing I recommend is to collect useful data. So when you're making decisions about what to collect and what to not collect, you need to make sure that what you decide to move forward with is actually useful. So you need to be thoughtful about what you are collecting and why I've said, as I've said before. There are four general types of uses that I've really come up with. One is used to make improvements. Second, used to make decisions. Third, use to understand the extent to which you are achieving your outcomes or are being successful. And fourth, data that helps you make a case that there is a need for your products and services and or initiatives. So if you are thinking about starting to collect a new data source or implement some new data collection processes, you need to consider how are you going to use it and whether or not it falls into any of those categories. Is it going to be used to make improvements, make decisions, uh, understand your success, or make your case? There are a couple things or a few things you can do to ensure you do this. Um, the first is to create a theory of change and use it to identify outcomes that would be priorities for you to collect data around. And I've done videos on both of those topics. So I've done a video on how to develop a theory of change and I've also done a video on how to use a theory of change to collect useful data. So I encourage you to check those out. Another thing you can do is to focus on decision making. So think about the upcoming decisions that you need to make in a year, six months, maybe in five years and make sure that you are collecting data that would help you make decisions around those topics. Another thing you can do is to focus on improvements. So ask staff and stakeholders and the people you work with what sort of information or feedback would help them make improvements to your services or your initiatives so that you make sure that you're always collecting some sort of information that will help you make improvements to your work. I'm curious to hear what else you all have done to identify useful data sources for yourselves. So let me know in the comments below. I think it'd be a great place for us to share different methods or techniques you all have engaged with to actually identify what would be useful for you all to collect. The next step I'll share to build a data-driven culture or a data-driven organization is to actually schedule in time to review your data. Like many of us, if something doesn't get on the calendar, at least I know this is for, true for in my case, if something doesn't get on the calendar, it doesn't get done. So this means that you should review your calendar and identify opportunities that might already exist to reflect and review your, your data. And if those opportunities don't already exist, I would also encourage you to go a step beyond and schedule in time specifically focused around reviewing the data you have already collected. What I'm referring to here is a data party. And I've talked about this a little bit before and I'm working on a video just now on how to, what a data party is and how to organize one. So I encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that video. But generally speaking, what I'm asking you to do here is to schedule in time to review your data and reflect on its implications for your work and to consider next steps based on your data. So find existing opportunities. And if those opportunities don't already exist, I really encourage you to make those opportunities happen. Again, if you don't schedule in time to review your data, the likelihood that it's going to stay locked away in a spreadsheet somewhere is more likely than not. The next step to becoming a more data-driven organization or building your data-driven culture within your organization is to consider how information flows within your organization and identify ways it can be improved. 
So what I'm recommending here is for you to take out a scratch piece of paper and to draw all the key players within your organization and to map out how information moves to and from those groups. This should help you understand, one, how information is shared throughout your organization, but might also help point out areas where that information flow or that, that process can be improved. So I'm talking about the different types of information that might be shared within your organization, including findings. Um, of course, I care the most about the findings. Doing this will help you understand areas where you might need improvements. This will also help you ensure that that information gets to the decision makers, to the program implementers when they need it the most. The next thing I would recommend is to consider assumptions. So what I would ask you to do is to write a list of potential assumptions and identify the ones that are most problematic. So assumptions are potential blind spots. Some assumptions are easy to make and are not problematic at all. So for example, when I go into a new conference room, I don't necessarily go around and check all the chairs to make sure they work. However, when I purchase a new product, I go into the review section to make sure that those new products or those big ticket items that I'm planning on buying actually work well. So some of the assumptions I have are safe assumptions to make, while others I actually spend a little bit of time collecting data so that I can make sure that my assumptions are true. What I would encourage here is to Create a list of assumptions, and you can think of these assumptions as hypothesis. <laughs> Consider which ones are potentially problematic and decide whether or not you need to collect data around those topics. The next tip is to be transparent about how you plan to use the data. So in order to follow through with this tip, you have to actually have a good use for your data. Um, but here, what I'm really asking you to do is to tell people and share with people how you plan to use your data. A lot of times, the people who are collecting the data are frontline people who are very passionate about your organization's mission. And it might feel to them as if you're taking time away from other important activities they could be doing to collect data. So if they understand that this data has a great purpose and a great use in the future, they're more likely to actually buy into the data collection process. They're more likely to help you identify better data collection opportunities or to point out potential data collection mishaps to you. As long as they know that this data is going to be put to good use to help your organization achieve its ultimate mission, the more likely they are to buy into the data collection process. So as much as you can, be very upfront and transparent about how the data is going to be used. And I also encourage you to go back and share the data or share the data findings with the people who collected the data themselves. The next tip is closely tied to the last one I shared, but it is to encourage people to participate in the data collection processes you are putting in place. So remember, people help support what they help create. So the more you can encourage them to be a part of building your organization's data capacity or evaluation capacity, the more likely they are to buy in. There are a number of ways you can do this. For example, you can have people participate in helping develop your organization's theory of change, or you can have people review different data collection instruments, or you can have people collect the data, or you can have people participate in making sense of the data. So what I'm talking about there are like having more people participate in data parties. Another thing you can do is encourage the people within your organization that are interested in building their own data skills to encourage them to build those skills. So maybe there is a class people are interested in attending or a conference that people are interested in attending that will help bolster their skills. The more you can do this, the better it is because people are going to see data more as an asset, as a thing that happens in-house, and as a thing that they have participated in and helped build up. The final tip is to remember that change takes time and there are steps you can take to help ensure that your change takes hold. 
For example, John Cotter in his book, Leading Change, outlined an eight-step process to establishing change. The first step is to um, create a sense of urgency. Then you have to develop a guiding coalition, followed by having that guiding coalition develop a vision or a strategy for the change. Then to consistently share that strategy or vision of the change consistently throughout your organization. The next step is to empower people to take action to highlight short-term wins. So anytime you have a win related to your new strategy, you highlight it, followed by consolidating gains, and finally, institutionalizing the changes. So if we go back to the first step, it's to create a sense of urgency. And there are, I'm sure you can think of a number of ways to do this, but I'll share a couple of examples to get your juices flowing. Uh, First, I would probably outline as much as you can how other organizations who have used data have used it as a competitive advantage. You can also highlight how data takes up a lot of resources and as a nonprofit, you can risk wasting resources. So you should ensure that all the data you have is useful and being used. In the comments below, I would love to hear what other things you have come up with to create a sense of urgency around building a data-driven culture within your organization. If you like this video, download my guide on getting useful data. It's a workbook you can go through to help you ensure that your data is all useful. But you can do that by joining my mailing list. Once you're on my mailing list, I'll send you weekly uh, resources, like grant opportunities I run into. And check out some of my other videos, like what is evaluation, or what are logic models, and how to develop a theory of change.